Hey guys, all right, good to be back. Last week, as I said to you guys as we were ending, I think that we are coming into something that could be really good in American Christianity. I think that we're beginning to see a sort of regime change. It hasn't happened yet, but we're beginning to see a regime change where there's there's sort of the rise of the normies, as I've said it before, the rise of the normal people, the normal Christians who love God and love his word, to where they are beginning to rise up and become more powerful voices, hopefully soon, than our regime evangelical leadership, Big Eva, whatever you want to call that, all right? I think we're beginning to see that happening. There's a lot of juice on our side, and this is a good thing. Is it because all those regime leaders are not truly Christians? No, I'm not saying that. Most of them are brothers in Christ. We need to pray for them. Uh, and in some instances, we need to forgive them, even though they have not asked for it, and even though they are at work against what I believe is righteous, God's righteousness in the land in lots of ways. This week, we have two great examples of what I mean by this. Exactly what I mean with this. Maybe good peacetime leaders that are not good wartime generals. They're just not, all right? And so these two responses to the election coming one from Russell Moore, run from John Piper. And I hope to do a very gracious job of explaining why I believe what I believe about these responses, why I think they are off, and uh, hopefully encourage you on how we can raise the standard of God's word in America, in the evangelical community. What can we be doing in my generation to live for Jesus? This is going to be a great example. So let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to Cooper Stuff. Great to be back. So obviously there's a ton going on right now. There's uh, social media is full. I mean, full, but the election stuff, there's so much noise happening. There's a lot to talk about. Hopefully you're listening to some good voices on this. The thing that is weird to me is this breakdown that is happening in the American church. I used to think, I've said this before, and I hope, I hope I'm saying this okay, that, okay, there's this split happening. There is the people of God. And the people of God, we have a a similar worldview. We believe the world should be uh, a certain way because of what the Bible tells us. And so it's group A, that's us. We're the people of God. And then maybe there's this other separation and people uh, who don't follow our faith, don't follow the word of God. And maybe they just see the world in a completely different way. And so our job is, of course, to preach the gospel. We want people's lives, uh, hearts and minds to be transformed. The Bible says that our minds are transformed by, uh, sorry, that we are transformed by the renewing of our minds by the word of God, right? The power of the Holy Spirit. So we, we need people to get saved. We need to preach the gospel so that they will have their, um, the scales of their eyes that will fall off. They will be able to see. They will no longer be blinded. They will no longer be deceived by the devil. And now that they that they have that, they begin to have a brand new worldview, and this is how we are uniting in the faith, etc. But that's not really what's happening, is it? That's the weird thing. It is not the case that just because you are a Christian, you see the world in this certain way. I think it's I think it's kind of like blown a lot of us away. It's shocked me. Has it shocked you? Probably. I think that's one of the really weird things that's happening. We're all reading the same Bible. We're coming to very very different conclusions. Also, or I should guess you should say moreover, what is also really even weirder about it is that right now we're in the midst of what I think, I hope, I pray, maybe a rise of the normies, the normal Christians. We're not theologians. We're not brilliant. We don't speak Greek. We can't go and read the original uh, you know, languages of the Bible and this and this and this, but we just love the word of God. And we are using common sense to to say, well, that's what the Bible says. So I think that we should do that. What is so weird is this bizarre bifurcation, which is just a big word for meaning separation, a weird separation between the normies, everyday normal God lovers, and the big Eva regime of leadership that for some reason sees the world in a completely different way when it comes to civic engagement in Christianity. It's like when the Olympics happened and all the normies went, oh, wait a minute, 
they're mocking my God. They're mocking Christianity right on the TV, right with the, all my kids are watching. We're all watching it. It is a mockery of God in the, the, the like, you know, in, uh, on a worldwide uh, stage. And all the normie Christians went, I don't like that. Even a lot of normie Americans who aren't even necessarily Christian were like, I don't like that. <laughs> right? <laughs> You know, people that are just sort of like traditional, like, well, you know, God and country, they might not even go to church. They might not even really be into Jesus at all, but they're like, hey, I don't like that. You're making fun of something that you should, that should not be mocked. Meanwhile, you have the Christian big evil regime telling us that we're bad people for being upset about it. Maybe we're setting some sort of hateful standard or something like that. That is the weird, weird thing going on. Why is there a bifurcation from the normie Christians to the big Eva Christians who have the theology degrees, who are the professors, who know all this stuff. And it makes you feel a little shaken, doesn't it? Well, guess what? If you're watching Cooper stuff, I got a word for you. Do not feel shaken. Something is going on not good. I don't know what it is, and I'm not gonna speculate about the whole thing. But if when there is this much of a bifurcation, something is going on. And a little test that I like to do, I'm not saying it works 100% of the time, but it works like 99.9% .9 of the time, is this. What does it cost you more to stand up for? Who does it cost more? The normie that I'm talking about that looks at the Olympics and is like, I don't like that. Or looks at the sports team thing that's happening when, when uh, men who identify as transgender can play in women's sports, be in their bathrooms, et cetera, et cetera. Who is sacrificing more to hold their position? Meaning, the normal Christian that says, I don't like that, I think it's wrong, I wanna stand up for what is right, I wanna stand up for justice. They're hated by the world. We are hated by the world when we do that. We suffer, right? We suffer when we do that. Well, what about the big EV establishment that says that we're bad for doing it and we were just we're, we need to, we have a uh, we're not loving the world they did the same thing with all the all the covid stuff all the pandemic stuff you're not loving your neighbor you're not getting the jab is that who does it cost more is big Eva sacrificing more or are the rise of, of excuse me or the normies sacrificing more who is more hated by the world is it people like us or is it, is it the regime? Who is more in line with the powers that be in the world? Is that is that Big Eva establishment? Are they getting the woke cookies? Are they gonna, here boy, are they getting the woke cookies, getting the hand clap? Woo, you, you're one of the good Christians. Are they getting the woke cookies? Or are we getting the woke cookies down here? No, we are the ones being yelled at. We are the ones maybe losing our jobs at some point. We are the ones that are wondering, why aren't they sending for righteous? We get chastised, not just by the world, but we get chastised by the big evil leadership. So what's the deal? I'm not even going to speculate. Something weird is going on. Before I read these two things, I want to read you Psalm 94, a little bit of it. Let's start on verse three. You ready? Oh Lord, how long shall the wicked... How long shall the wicked exult? Have you felt like that at all? We're stopped there. One verse. How long will the wicked exult? How long is God going to let this go on? Verse four. They pour out their arrogant words. All the evildoers boast. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. You see, we're getting down to it. Are we, are we, getting, are we getting down to it now? Have you felt that there has been an increasing of evil in our nation, not just in our nation, in the West, that is crushing the people of God and is afflicting God's heritage. They kill the widow and the sojourner and murder the fatherless. This is talking about injustice, okay? And they say, the Lord does not see, the God of Jacob does not perceive. Let's go down to verse 11. The Lord, no, verse 10, excuse me. He who disciplines the nations, does he not rebuke? This is God. Does he not rebuke? He who teaches man knowledge, the Lord, knows the thoughts of man, that they are but a breath. Blessed is the man whom you discipline, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law to give him rest 
from days of trouble until a pit is dug for the wicked. I want to read again. Verse 12, blessed is the man whom you discipline, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law. Blessed is the man who you teach out of your law. Why don't we have Christian leadership right now who is, is absolutely exhausted of the wicked exalting themselves and who has a clear conscience about what is more evil? Yes, there's, there's different kinds of evil. There's greater levels of it, but certainly some things are far more evil than other things. Why aren't they on, on their knees weeping about it? God, how long will you let this happen? Blessed is the man whom you discipline, O Lord, whom you teach out of your law to give him rest from days of trouble. Why don't they want rest from days of trouble? Something very strange is going on. Go down to verse 20. Can wicked rulers be allied with you? Talking to God. Can wicked allies, excuse me, can wicked rulers be allied with you? Those who frame injustice by statute, and the uh, frame could also be translated fashion. Those who fashion injustice by statute. Do you know what that means? I'm sorry I'm doing this really long reading, but it's important. Can wicked rulers be allied with God? Those who frame injustice by statute. Do you know what it means to frame? Certainly, all these Christian leaders hate injustice. They, they, certainly, they hate it when the innocent are, are killed. I'm sure they do. Give the benefit of the doubt. I'm sure they hate it. But let's talk about something that is worse than when just an injustice happens. There's something worse than that. What happens when the rulers of a land fashion injustice by statute? In other words, they put into law that by law it is righteous to do the wicked thing. Do you see? They fashion injustice. The very next verse says, they band together against the life of the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. Hello. Have you seen that happen at all? It, there's something even worse than when just a, a public sin happens. It is when the leaders of a nation have so mocked God, have so mocked his heritage, have so so oppress the people of God that they have taken God's law and they have turned it upside down. And now they say, okay, wickedness is going to be something that we call righteous and we are going to put it into law. I don't know. Something like that it is lawful to kill the unborn. Call me crazy. Something like that. Can you imagine such a thing? Can wicked rulers be allied with you, those who frame injustice by statute? They band together against the life of the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. Something weird is going on with this big evil leadership. And it is time, it is time for us to send them packing. It's happening as we speak. This is very, very good because the normies in Christianity have had enough. They want to see God's law respected. They want to see God's ways celebrated in the public sphere. We are no longer listening to those big evil leaders who might be way smarter than us. No, let me, let me rewind. They are way smarter than, they're certainly smarter than me. They may have the degrees. They may know theology far better than I do. They may be able to be able to explain super lapsarian. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they might know all the stuff. But for some reason, they do not understand justice. I, I don't understand. I don't know what's going on. So we are sending them packing. We're no longer listening to their advice. We are no, I'm not saying that we don't give them the honor that they are due for the good things they did for the kingdom. Yes. So we honor that. Okay. I'm not here to blast them. I am here to say, I, I don't think we can listen to them. I'm going to make a case to you. It's my opinion. You may disagree. Totally fine. We can still be friends. Send me a comment. They're still brothers. I do not understand what's going on. So I want to start with, I, I, I think I got to start with John Piper's. Uh, I, I think that's what I have to do. I'm going to read an article from church leaders on this. This is painful. This is so very painful. So let me start. I've said this before because I've talked about Piper before. Piper is a great man of God. I respect Piper. I love Piper. He's a brother in Christ. Um, He's an elder statesman, so I take no pleasure at all in coming on and, and talking about his words. 
and, and coming out hard against this. Take no pleasure in it whatsoever. But it needs to be said, I don't know why these are not good wartime generals. I, I don't understand. Okay, so love Piper. I, I just don't understand what's going on. I really don't. When it comes to politics and civic engagement, it makes no sense. I'm going to read this article from Church Leaders. Um, this is uh, churchleaders.com. The title, if you want to look it up, is John Piper under fire for referring to Trump's reelection as an, quote, evil. Oh, here we go. John Piper is drawing criticism for his remarks about the re-election of former President Donald Trump. Piper, who has long been respected as a pastor and theologian in evangelical spaces, has also been consistently critical of Trump. Um, okay, fine with me. Presidential election results, Piper wrote on Wednesday, quote, having delivered us from one evil, God now tests us with another. And then he has Deuteronomy 13, 3. The Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. I'm going to read it again. You ready? This is what his tweet says. And this is for it, the title is Presidential Election Results. Here's his tweet. Having delivered us from one evil, God now tests us with another. All right. First things first. Find something I can agree with Piper about on this. Yes, a lot of Christians, like Cooper stuff, think, I think we got two, we got two bad options here, okay? There are things, as you know, that I do not like about Trump. I'm sure you don't either. Yes, the womanizing stuff. Yes, the marital infidelity stuff. Yes, the uh, some of the, you know, uh, remarks that were made. I'm not going to say them because kids are watching. Before the last election, they came out, okay? Locker room talk, he called it. Christians shouldn't like that. I don't like that. All right? I don't like that he so adjusted his position on on um, on the abortion issue. I don't like it. Okay? So, <laughs> Piper's like, how it delivered us from one evil, God now tests us with another. Okay, yes. And every politician is going to let us down. Every political situation is going to let us down. We have one king of kings. We have one worthy um, uh, a judge, right? Yes. But what Piper is doing here is just so frustrating. Delivered us from one evil, God tests with another. It's, it's sort of like saying, hey, do you want to you know, die by drowning or electrocution? Uh, okay, you saved you from drowning. Now you got the other. Like, they're both terrible. I mean, you, you, you know, pick your poison here. Why, why doesn't he mention anything about discerning between the kinds of evils we're talking about? Yes, I'm really frustrated that Trump went mild on his position about abortion. Is it a far greater evil that a Harris that, that Harris promised that she would put the right to abortion into federal law? Far worse. You you can't compare these things. In fact, it kind of reminds me of Psalm 94, verse 20. Can wicked rulers be allied with you, those who frame injustice by statute? Uh, what's the next verse? They band together against the life of the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. This it is a perfect example of what we're talking about. Yes, I'm disappointed in the Trump thing. However, the other one puts into statute a law of wickedness and calls it righteous. How can you compare these things like they're kind of equal? Then Piper has the, he gives 13, 13. The Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. I'm sorry, not sorry. What does that even mean? Piper's a genius. Piper's an intellectual. He's brilliant. And he's a really good man, pious man. But I'm sorry, but what, what does that have to do with anything? You could literally put that at the end of anything in the whole world. Just got married. God gave me a wife, but God's testing me to find out whether I love the Lord with all my heart. And I'm like, it's like, <laughs> thank you. Happy birthday. Here's your birthday cake, but God's testing you. <laughs> it's like, don't love that cake more than you love Jesus. I mean, true, but what are you getting at? Now, I'm going to read a little bit more of this, but, but no, no, before I read a little bit more of the, of the article, let me explain why this is so frustrating. You might remember in 2020, John Piper wrote a whole thing about the election with Biden and Trump, and it was really frustrating, really frustrating and very 
ethically, morally confused, in my opinion. He basically made the case that we had two really bad options here. And yes, uh, even though Biden's policies will lead to death, he's pro-abortion, pro-choice, and he wants to extend that onto, you know, basically abortion on demand. And he wants to make every taxpayer help pay for those, which means that we all are involved. My money that I, uh, that I earn, that I then have to give in taxes, I am helping pay for the abortions of women all over the nation and down into South America through the Mexico City policy, which Biden re-implemented. So Piper's saying, well, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of death. And there's other things too, like the radical uh, tr transgender theory ideology pushing. There's lots of things there that cause death, but, but, but Trump is arrogant and arrogance leads to death. Now, let me ask you, normie Christian, let me ask you, normie parent watching this thing. Normie parent, do you see a difference in those guys? <laughs> do you see any difference, like le level of, of, of consequence in those things between the literal uh, immediate death of the innocent and the true principle because Piper is right, the true principle that arrogance, pride comes before the fall. So therefore, pride does lead to death. The wages of sin is death. Pride is sin. The wages of sin is death. We know that. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, the Bible says. So that's true. I'm not saying it's not true. But as a parent, normally parent, do you see any difference between that? It's a little bit like you have two kids. Um, my wife, Corey, said this. Like you have two kids and one of your kids went to the next door and burn the house down. And you're like, oh my gosh, why did you do this? Little Sammy, you sit him down, Sammy, what have you done? You burned their house down. You have ruined it. You, they don't have their family pictures anymore. The family dog was in the house. All these horrible things. How could you do that against your neighbor? It's so bad. But also your brother, little Patrick, you had a bad thought today. And that bad thought is, is sin and sin leads to death. And you need to know that. Both of what you have done causes death in our city. We have to discern between these kinds of evils and the normal, everyday, normie Christian parent who doesn't have a Bible degree but just loves to read the Bible would know that. I actually submit to you that you don't even need to read the Bible to know that. It's an obvious truth. Everybody knows that. There are levels of evil that you're dealing with. We have that in our society, right? We don't give the death penalty to people who steal. So we have levels of these things. So what what Piper did in 2020 was so very, It's it, it, I, I don't wanna to be too rude, but it's almost like false piety because there is a truth of what he's saying. Hey, you know, if the leader is super arrogant and has bad moral character, that will spread into the nation because, you know, uh, leaders, because of, of, of you know, covenant theology and, and covenant headship and this and other rulers are God's appointed ministers uh, on the earth. That's true. So there is a piety to this, which actually is true. It is a call to observe the law of God as a call to unto holiness to say, we want leaders who respect God's law and have moral character and love righteousness and love what is pure and what is lovely, what is good. Yes, we do want that, but it is a false piety that comes in and then says, yeah, so there's that. And then there's also this other thing, which is the slaughter of the innocent. And those things are exactly the same. The consequences are not exactly the same. Everybody knows that. I want to read a more on this church leader's article because some of the responses to him are really good. Um, while Piper's uh, stern opposition to Trump is notable among evangelicals, he has been equally opposed to the candidates against whom Trump has faced off in the last three election cycles. In 2020, Piper said in reference to the race between Biden and Donald Trump that his calling as a pastor would be, quote, contradicted by supporting either pathway to cultural corruption and eternal ruin. That's what I'm trying to say. I didn't know that was in the article. I hadn't read the full article, sorry. That's exactly what I was just trying to say. There, let, let, let's read what he said again, that supporting either Biden or Trump 
would be contradicted by a, as a pastor, would be contradicted by supporting either pathway to cultural corruption and eternal ruin. Uh, this is just remarkable to me. You have, you have, oh, you have an administration that literally shut down churches whilst keeping, I'm never going to get over it. So I mention it every week. I don't care if people get annoyed about it or not. Shut down your churches whilst opening strip clubs. That's it. <laughs> they have put pro-lifers in prison as we speak. They have censored Christians on social media. They have censored conservative people on social media. If you say something true about biology that goes against the reigning trans ideology, if you speak about uh, uh, men and women's sports, et cetera, et cetera, you could lose your job. You are being censored. The truth is outlawed in the public. It's just, just amazing to me. There's only one administration that is doing that. This is him talking, quote, Piper. When I consider the remote possibility that I might do any good by endorsing the devastation already evident in the two choices before me, I am loath to undermine my calling and the church's mission to stand for Christ's exalting faith and hope and love. At times, it happens in a fallen world that a vote for any proposed candidate is so offensive, so morally compromised, so misleading that it may be a matter of great, greater integrity, more faithful obedience to Christ, and a clear witness of truth if we do not vote for any of the proposed candidates. Okay, so again, I do this all the time. I'm sorry, but not sorry. It needs to be said again. Do you think that Piper would say that very same thing if you were to rewind 70 years into the civil rights era? No, he would not. Or another hundred years but before that, into 1850, 1840, 1830, into the era of slavery. And you'd be like, hey, slavery is dehumanizing, but you know what? So is arrogance. And this guy's super duper arrogant, and he has mean tweets, even though there's no tweets in 1830, but whatever version of those mean tweets he has, them, I heard him cussing. Yes, yeah, slavery is really bad, but that guy said some bad words. No, I don't think Piper would do this. I think he would look back and say, no, there was levels of greater sin. You know why? Because of Psalm 94, verses 20. Can wicked rulers be allied with you? Those who frame injustice by statute. Slavery, which we believe is wicked, was made righteous according to the law. Is that worse? Yes, it is. Let's read some people's um, responses. Sean Foyt who's been on our show, is a friend of mine. He's a worship leader. Here's how he responded. Massive L take here. <laughs> loss. Loser take. But massive loss take here, he says. Eric Metaxas, who is also a friend of ours, a friend of mine, a friend of the show, he decided to go full like meltdown on it. He says, this is religious horse crap, said author Eric Metaxas. Shame on these pastors for not being sons of Issachar, but rather modern day Pharisees and Sadducees, not knowing truth from a lie. Lord, deliver us from them. All right, so Metaxas went full full meltdown mode here. I do think that something he's saying is really important. Shame on these pastors for not being sons of Issachar. Sons of Issachar is in the Old Testament. The sons of Issachar, um, the Bible says, were, were men who understood the times. They're men who had sight to see and understood the times and knew what to do about it. That's the implication. They understand what's going on in the world. I see what's happening. Sometimes uh, people say sons of Issachar uh, synonymously with when somebody says that somebody has a prophetic voice to a generation or maybe even as a prophet, which is language that everybody uses. But sons of Issachar is a great way to say it. They, they understood the times, they saw what was happening, and they understood, they were educated, they knew what to do about it because they had wisdom to see. There's something weird happening in our Big Eva class. They're brilliant. They know the Bible. I do believe they love God, but they, for some reason, they're blind to what's going on. They are not sons of Issachar. And I think even though Metaxas went a little bit heavy on that tweet, I think there's something he's saying there that's good. Um, let's see. Uh, let's go to the next one. Um, Stephen Wolf, who I do not know, but he wrote a book called The Case for Christian Nationalism. This is what he tweeted. His where he responded. You gave annual sermons celebrating a serial adulterer. 
um, in reference to Piper's admiration of Martin Luther King Jr. <sighs> woo, woo, that's brutal, but hold on. Seth, is that fact check true? Fact check true. Seth knows it. He did. I'm sorry. There wasn't any. Yes, but but we do need to. We can't celebrate Martin Luther King because he did do this thing. And, and we can't do that. And it would be evil to make any sort of support because of it. He didn't do that. <sighs> Let's see. Here's another one. Um, I think this is Megan Basham, who's also been on the show. She says, I have long benefited from Pastor John and his ministry, but this is incredibly disappointing. Trump's policy positions pose some problems for Christians, yes, but the two sides were not morally equivalent. We should all be rejoicing this morning that he did not hand us over to leadership with the most wicked policies this nation has ever known. Boom. Normie. Megan Basham. She writes for the Daily Wire. That's true. We should be celebrating that. This is really good because we have pro-lifers and, and we know that this administration is against this. We haven't even gotten into things. I didn't even get into last week. The possibilities of what could happen with a Harris administration in world war. We're not that far from a, I mean, I don't want to be alarmist, from a possible world war three level catastrophe. We are not far from that. It's this close. <laughs> so it like pulling the trigger on those things, but saying I couldn't speak against it. I, I can't, I can't celebrate it because also this guy's arrogant. That's bananas to me. Now I've got no issue with, with Piper saying, Hey, as a pastor, I don't want to come on and endorse a candidate, but I am going to say, these are the things I will be voting for. Because it's going to be obvious if you say, I'm, I'm going to vote for what can get us closer to, to getting righteous law, which would protect the unborn. Whatever gets us closer to that, that's what I'm going to be voting for. I'm going to be voting for whatever um, keeps our freedom of speech so we can spread the gospel without recrimination of the government. It's going to be obvious who you're voting for, so you don't have to actually come out and say, so therefore I'm, in, I'm voting for this guy. It's going to be clear. You could even say, well, this is what this side wants to do, and this is what the other side said that they're going to do. And they say that hate speech is a free speech, and they have said that hate speech includes saying things that are true when it comes to sexuality and gender. Everybody's going to know what you're doing here. <sighs> Let's see, are there any more? Uh, some people some people supported it. Neil Shinvey supported it. Neil Shinvey has been on this show once. He, he supported Biden. Uh, excuse, me, excuse me, I did not mean to say that. Piper. He says, guys, Piper didn't say Trump is the greater evil or Christians should not have voted for him or even I wish Harris had won. He's reminding us of what many of us were saying when, e.g., Trump eviscerated the GOP's pro-life platform. So I think Shinvey's dead wrong on this. I, I really do. I think he's dead wrong on this. Yeah, he's right. He didn't say, hey, Trump is a greater evil, but he also didn't make clear that Harris is a greater evil, which is obvious to anyone if they hold to these things that we, oh, I think it's obvious. It's obvious to the normies. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm getting at. 82% of evangelicals voted this way. Why do you have the big evil leaders in such a weird different side? So I think Shinvi's wrong about this. I like Shinvi, but I think he's wrong about this. We, we didn't say that he said Trump was the greater evil. We're saying that he is making two things equal that you should not be making equal. And I think all the normies know that. That's the point. And yes, we're bummed out. The Trump eviscerated the GOP's pro-life platform. It's still not near as bad as the other thing. And what's also frustrating is that we have the receipts. It's because of Trump that Roe was overturned in the first place. It's, it's, it, it just is. And I know that's shocking to a lot of people um, because they thought, I, they thought, I, I don't think he's actually going to really do that. But he did. So I just think that this is really... Here's another person. I don't know this person that says... Piper is demonstrating a calculus level of understanding of God's testing. Is he though? Is he though? 
Many of the replies show a need for a basic mathematics level test, said biblical counselor Joseph Leval. I don't know that person. Piper spot on. May our fidelity and love be to Christ our King. Duh. Yes, we want our... I'm sorry, I shouldn't say duh because it makes it sound like I'm being too mean. But what does that have to do with anything? May our fidelity and love to Christ be our King. Amen. And what's the point? It's got nothing to do with this. Who on here? Who on here? Is it Megan Basham? That's, is she saying that, that maybe your, your allegiance shouldn't be to Christ the King? It should be to Trump? No. Is it Eric Metaxas? No. Is it anybody? Said no one. Said no one. This isn't a calculus level whatever. I, I actually got to turn it, and I don't know Joseph Lebel's, so I'm not trying to be rude. I got to flip his words on him. I do not think that Piper is demonstrating calculus level of understanding. And if there's anybody... That it says many of the replies show a need for a basic mathematics level test. I think it's you guys, uh, Joseph Leval, with all due respect, I think it's you guys that do. I think you're very, very confused about the difference between e there being discernment between a greater evil and a lesser evil. I think you're the one that's confused about it. <clears throat> now I want to read another response. From someone, um, uh, I just lost it. Hold on, let me go find it again. Uh, called Russell Moore. Russell Moore is the editor in chief at Christianity Today. I like to call it Christianity Yesterday because it used to, in fact, be a, a you know orthodox and and I should say orthodox. I should say faithful. I find it to be extremely unfaithful. Just me. Russell Moore was also the head of the SBC's. Uh, religious Liberties Wing was the RL, I forget what it's called, and who really cares, whatever it's called. He was the head of that. Russell Moore, David French, they're all kind of losing their minds about the Trump victory. So he's the editor-in-chief of Christianity Today. Let's see what he has to say. I will not be quite as nice about Russell Moore as I am Piper because I think Piper, uh, I never really knew Russell Moore, so I don't really have a history. Piper has done great things. He's written books that have nourished my soul. He's Piper is a really good man. Um, I never knew Russell Moore until 2020. And I've yet to see anything that I've thought to me that I agreed with. So here we go. Um, let's see, blah, 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 blah. The title right above the title is it, there's a, a, a quote from this article that says the nonstop news cycle will be crazy. You don't have to be. I agree, Russell Moore. It's the only thing I agree with in the whole paper. I agree with that. You don't have to be crazy. Let's see what he has to say. Someone walked up to me in an airport last week and said, so what do you think about the election? I was in a less than ideal mood at the moment for reasons that had nothing to do with the election, but I stopped myself from saying sarcastically, what do you think I think about the election? You know, okay. <laughs> what do you think I think about the election? All right. Kind of giving away the game here. Kind of giving away the game. I don't think Russell Moore would be writing this at Harris One. I don't think he'd be like, what do you think I think about the election? So it. So I'm sorry if people think that I'm, if anybody thinks I'm not being fair, but it's, you just gave away the game. What do you think I think about the election? So what are we to think? We are to think that a lot of these big evil leaders, Russell Moore being one of them, doesn't really have this same issue as we say, oh Lord, how long shall the wicked how long shall the wicked exult? They frame injustice by statute. They should have a different idea of what injustice is. What is injustice according to Russell Moore? Did Donald Trump being mean, sending mean tweets, saying he wants to build a wall. It's crazy. The last thing I wanted to talk about, back to the article, after 10 years of talking about him was Donald Trump. Now the news cycle will be the Donald Trump show all day, every day, for four more years. Why is that? I'm sorry, I got to stop. But why is that, Russell Moore? It's because you guys are the ones that are talking about him nonstop, every day, all day. Usually by making up stories, <laughs> by, make, by saying things that are false. Back to the article, the nonstop news cycle and drama won't be some unforeseen circumstance. It's what the American people voted for. The theory that people would want to, quote, turn the page on all that offered by Vice President Kamala Harris proved false. Turns out most people like the drama just fine. So here we go. This is Russell Moore saying all of you are to blame. Hope you're happy. You liked the drama. Now we get four years of it. We were going to turn the page on all that and, and have, a, have a Kamala Harris 
We would have turned the page on the drama. Could have had a Harris administration without drama, like possible World War III, possible not supporting Israel, <laughs> possible, um, you know, putting, uh, uh, not even possible, she's promised to do it, putting abortion mandated by federal law, paid for by your taxes, putting pro-lifers in prison, censorship of Christianity from the what would be a Harris administration and an, e an evil alliance with Facebook and YouTube and all these other things. All of that, an alliance in a one world socialist government and the World Economic Forum to come and take your things, take your money and redistribute it to all around the world via open borders. We could go keep going down the list could have turned the page and all that Donald Trump drama and we could have had all that, which apparently is not drama. How are these our leaders? One thought comes to mind. Maybe it's the judgment of God that these are our leaders. Woo. Okay, let's keep going. I have very little to say that I haven't already said. Very little to write that I haven't already written. And there are very few people who think like I do. Or so in other words, yes, because it's you. It's you keeping them in the news every single minute of every single day. I can't control that, but neither can you. As a matter of fact, there's very little any of us can do to control the next four years with a news cycle that will be like the last near decade, all Trump, all the time. This is the one part I agree with, yes. I want to be obsessed with the word of God. I want to be obsessed with what God is doing in the earth, of preaching the gospel. I don't want to be obsessed with Trump and the news, of course. But these guys are missing something. In, I, I'm, let me get to it. Let me get to it. I'm almost, I'm almost done. We're going to end a little early. Um, let's see. Just like the, during the last near decade, those who support Trump and those who oppose him will continue to look at one another the way Adams and Jefferson did in the French Revolution. How could you support or not support that? Blah, 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 blah. And then he says, the passivity of Americans and their own civic order is always a problem. The, all right, blah, 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 blah. Um, let me get to the part I wanted to say. Hold on. We haven't seen the end result of that constant flow. We've seen... The constant flow of real and fake information spikes our adrenaline and blah, blah. So he's making it sound like, here's what he's getting at. He's basically saying, all that you, all that these people want is the drama. They want that dopamine that comes with, I found a new thing and, oh, my side won. Woo, I got a dose of drama. He compares it in here to pornography, which I won't read right now. And there's kids watching and stuff too. But he's, he's, he's comparing it to the emptiness. Uh, thank God, of course, he agrees uh, that... There's the emptiness of pornography, and, it, and, and it's, it's horrible. It's wicked. He agrees with that, so I'm not trying to say whatever. And he's saying at the same time, it gives you that, that, that dopamine that makes you think you like something, but it leaves you empty afterwards. All sin does this. And he's saying that this political drama does the same things. And what he's getting at, and I'm not going to read the rest of it, is he's basically saying, I think pretty clearly, that basically all you want is to turn on your news feed and go, oh, my side won again. Yeah, Trump... Trump is owning the libs. Oh, this is so good. My side won. I'm against them. Why don't these leaders understand that for most Christians, that is not what's going on at all. For most Christians, what is going on is this. I go back to our scripture reading for the day. Psalm 94 verse 3. Oh Lord, how long shall, shall the wicked exult? They pour out their arrogant words. All the evildoers boast. They crush your people. They afflict your heritage. They kill the widow and the sojourner and they murder the fatherless. Most of us watch these things and we're not like, oh, political victory. I, I just, I'm it's us against them. We are sick of seeing wickedness called righteousness in a country that we love. We're sick of watching the Olympics and seeing our God mocked. We are sick of the slaughter of the unborn and calling it justice. We're sick of this shout your abortion stuff and, 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 and mockeries. Made. We're sick of seeing justice perverted and pro-life people being put in prison. We're sick of it. We're sick of seeing the slaughter of innocent people in this nation. It shouldn't be happening. We're sick of seeing murderers being arrested and then set free because of some kind of progressive crime policies. We're sick of going to any major city and finding needles all over the ground. Homeless people and drug addicts everywhere and crazy people. We're sick of it. Why don't they understand this? 
They keep yelling, no, no, it's just because you like the drama. So I guess it's your fault. You like the drama. So I guess it's, we're going to get more of that, more of him all the time. Well, respectfully, I would say, Russell Moore, it's you and your cohorts, cohorts who talk about Trump constantly. It's you guys who are obsessing about it. It's you guys who have gotten very confused, in my opinion, about what justice actually is. Because we, we Christians, we want rest. And what does the Psalm say that I just read to you? The Lord disciplines those he loves, and in his discipline, he teaches us wisdom from his law so that we may rest and one day see the wicked lose. That's what we are celebrating. And I don't know why that leadership doesn't get it. And I won't speculate on a lot of things, but I do think one thing is going on. I think that during peacetime, we didn't notice these guys. We didn't. We didn't know how confused they were when it comes to ethics and morality. Now, maybe good on moral morality, meaning, hey, um, pray, don't want, don't look at things you shouldn't look at, don't say things you shouldn't say, personal piety. But there is no vision, no vision for cultural engagement for the gospel. And it is sad to me that it is having to come from normies like you and me and our tribe who are rising up in revolution to overthrow that big evil regime and say, no, no, you, we are not listening to you anymore. We have the microphone now and we are going to train our kids. We're going to train Christians. We're going to train our tribe in the, the holiness of God so that we may train the nations and see Christ lifted up, not just in my personal life, not just in my family, at my house, not just in my church, in my little building, in the public square, that we may exalt the name of the living God, exalt the name of Jesus Christ and stand up for holiness and goodness. I hope that this has been encouraging to you guys. It's time for the normies to rise up. Have a good week. Read the Bible.